All right, so I'm Micah. Uh, I do have at the bottom here, uh, if you haven't already noticed, a link to the slides if you want to take note of that real quick. Uh, it's just link.wpscholar.com slash WCAVL, which is the WordCamp Asheville hashtag, dash 2019 dash standards. So uh, you can get at all the information here. So uh, who's familiar with WordPress coding standards in general? Uh, okay. So basically, I'm just going to cover real quick what they are. Uh, and essentially, to kind of understand what coding standards are, we're going to take a look first at coding conventions. Uh, and really, all a convention is is uh, some general guidelines that we as developers have realized are probably good things to do. They result in higher quality software. Uh, and so everywhere you go, everyone, every individual is going to have some conventions that they use in their code or the way that they work with their code. Uh, that's kind of a best practice, right? So. Uh, so these are the conventions, but not everybody necessarily agrees on these things, right? Everybody has their own opinions and ways of doing things. Uh, but coding standards are essentially conventions that have been formally adopted by a group or an organization, right? So when we say the WordPress coding standards, all we're really referring to is the fact that WordPress, the organization as a whole, uh, the community, everyone involved in contributing to WordPress itself, has decided on some standards, and the ones that we've documented are the coding standards and things that we're going to follow. So, <clears throat> uh, so that's all we're saying when we're talking about WordPress coding standards. Um, and of course, as a plugin author or a theme author, uh, you might not necessarily want to follow the WordPress coding standards to a T because they're technically for WordPress core development. Uh, so there could be some things where you may want to deviate a little bit here and there. Um, but as a general rule, if you're working in the WordPress space, the WordPress coding standards are a very good place to start. Uh, they may not meet your needs perfectly, but the important thing to know is uh, each team in each organization gets to decide that. So if you work at an agency and you have your own version of standards, that's perfectly fine. Um, it's not one size fits all, right? So you want to make sure that you adapt the coding standards that you use uh, to how you and your organization or team work. Um, and of course, standards can change over time. Uh, as a uh, father of four children, I, I really like this. Uh, please excuse the mess. We, uh, our standards have lowered with each child, right? Uh, <laughs> so as your organization changes, as your team changes, uh, maybe you get more uh, different types of de developers from different uh, places. Uh, that can impact, you know, maybe how you formulate your standards and things. So uh, just important to know that it's not one size fits all, and you can change anything about them. You can exclude rules, things like that. Uh, so why should we use them? The ultimate reason is because it's going to make our code easier to maintain, uh, easier to debug, and hopefully easier to add features as well. Um, and that's the general guideline uh, as to why we would do this. Uh, more specifically, um, there's a lot of benefits, right? So one of those is that your code is going to be more consistent. Obviously, if you have some sort of tool that's looking at your code, and uh, hey, uh, and there, there are my four kids right there, so, uh, <laughs> and my wife. <laughs> um, so, uh, so the code is going to be more consistent. Uh, so when you have something that's scanning your code for you uh, and, and saying, you know, there should be spacing here, you should use tabs, you should do this, um, your code's going to naturally be more consistent in the way that it reads, um, which is going to make it easier to read, right? So uh, think of it as uh, when you're reading a book, if someone mushed all the paragraphs together and didn't indent them, uh, it's going to be a lot harder to read. But we have basic guidelines for how people put books together. Uh, we put spaces in between paragraphs. And if you don't do that, you indent the lines uh, so you can tell where the next thought is occurring, right? So it's the same idea. Uh, you, if you can provide general structure to your code, it'll be a lot easier to read. Uh, one of the nice things about things like code editors is you can actually tell it to auto format your code based off of your, your standards, uh, which means that you can take something someone else wrote that is an absolute mess, and if you are charged with maintaining it, you can just reformat the whole thing in one go uh, and then work on it from there. So another thing is it's going to make collaboration easier. So obviously, if you've uh, you know, are trying to get uh, your code to a point where it's a little easier to understand, 
uh, it's going to make it easier for everyone to kind of pitch in, especially if they know not just, um, uh, especially if they can know what the expectations are moving forward as to how the code should be written and how it should look. And uh, it's going to make your code more secure. Uh, and the reason, well, I say.